So we could have Pastor Don come up. Yeah. <laughs> you got so excited about greeting people. So Father God, we just ask that your presence would continue to be made known. Speak your heart and your words through Don today. And we just thank you and open our ears and hearts to your heart. Amen. Well, here's his word for you today. Tom Brock is speaking. Okay? So, um, let me introduce Tom. Actually, he needs no introduction. Tom, get on up there and give us the word. Most High will overshadow you. 
So the Holy One will be born and will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will, will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be fulfilled in me. Then the angel left her. And at that time, Mary got ready and turned to a town in the hill of country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child that you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has, who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promise to her. All right. You're very welcome. That will cost you a TJ Maxx. We're not even teaching on that. I just wanted to hear you read it. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, it's great to be back with you guys, and uh, yeah, good things ahead. Listen, do me a favor. Mike's coming, Pilabachi's coming to you guys on Wednesday. Okay, after he teaches, go up to him and say, Mike, that was amazing. Almost as good as Tom and Sidney. Uh, how many of you will do that for me? Just, you know, he'll be great, he'll be better, but it's truth. We don't, you know, don't feed his ego. Just come up to him and say, that was almost as good as Tom and Sidney. All right, do that. Listen, this is a, a great story, and it, and it fits into a couple of things prophetically, but really for who we are as people in the kingdom of God. Let me ask you a question. How many of you here have been born again at least 15 years? Okay, so you're, you're in there, all right? 20? Uh, 21, 21, 21, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. <laughs> So you've been around for a while, right? This is a great story, because what happens in this, sometimes we forget that we have a destiny in the Holy Spirit even when we get older. And there's something the Holy Spirit wants to impart to each and every one of us to understand that there's a cross-generational blessing that God wants to bring. And just because you start getting older doesn't mean, and most people, they, they start thinking, well, this is our retirement plan. Well, I'm going to do this, then I'm going to quit. Or then I'm going to do this. Or we're going to move to our home, summer home somewhere else. You know, and, and this is kind of the concept. But in the kingdom, that isn't the, the, the premise by which we believe or by which we establish the future in the kingdom. The Lord wants to bring about a, a, a kind of a drilling of the information that's hidden in our hearts to bring it forward so that everyone can be blessed by the situation. So let's look at the story. Zachariah and Elizabeth, it says that they practiced the things of the Lord without blame. That's a good thing. You know, they went to church, they did their thing, they knew how to do everything, but there was one problem, they were barren. Now, in culture, in, especially in the uh, Israeli culture, to be barren was a bummer. You know, it was just a reproach. It brought, you know, like questions of your godliness and who you were and what you are, and that was kind of the situation. But everything they did before the Lord was fine, except for they were barren, so it was a problem. So it's kind of like, that's that. And so... They, uh, he, goes to, he goes to the temple to pray, it is his turn, and as he's there, you know, Zachariah, he's at doing his time, he gets to go into the temple, you know, it's kind of a fun thing, he's going to the Holy Holies and do his thing. The angel of the Lord appears to him. Now, if you're an old guy, an angel of the Lord appears, what are you thinking? I'm going home. This, this is it. And then what the angel says is even fright, more frightening, and another translation says, we're here because of your wife's prayers. Now you, I am definitely going home now. You know, you know, that's it. So, you know, he gets that, that done. And she, he says to him, listen, I got news for you. The Lord's favor is with you. He's going to answer your prayer. He's heard your cry. And you're going to have a child. Your wife's going to get pregnant. And it's going to be amazing. This child's going to do great things. Well, Zachariah, being of sound mind, looks at the angel, looks at himself. He goes, dude, I'm sure he said that. He goes, dude. You know, I'm an old guy, and I'm married to an old girl, all right? Now, how old were they? I always say they were older than anybody here, okay? And they were well along in years. And it was like to that point where it was a, 
you know, it was definitely going to be a challenge in the spirit for this to take place as well as in the flesh. So he sits there, he says, how can you even say that? And as Susie expressed it, when Gabriel looks at him and says, you little whippersnapper, do you know who I am? You know, and can you imagine your job standing before the throne of God and you have to be sent down to talk to this old guy about getting pregnant, you know, this kind of thing? He's going, you know, you're wasting my time. I want to get back to the presence of God. What the heck? He says, you know what? Because you have doubted, the Lord's still going to do what he said, but you're going to shut your mouth. Now, that's good news and bad news. Because a lot of times, even in today, when we look at the church, we look at the situations. How many of you have heard, the Lord's going to do a great thing. We're on the edge of revival. The time is coming. Those prophetic words, you know, how many of you heard that? You know, at least twice today. And that's, you know, that's how it is. We hear these words, but we never see that manifest presence of Jesus. We never see those things fulfilled. And it's like how many people have gone to their grave thinking the Lord was going to come back next week. It always makes me nervous when somebody comes up to me and says, you know, I, I think the time of the Lord's getting close. And they may be right for them. Yeah. You know, and that's what's happened. A lot of people have done that. They've gone to see the Lord. They go, well, we're still here. You know, but they're, they've gone to see, they were right, wrong for me. And that's kind of a situation. But in that, we have that prophetic word that keeps getting pushed off and pushed off and pushed off. And basically the scripture says what? Hope deferred makes the heart sick. And so in that, a lot of times what we do, we settle into the status quo and we forget that we're called to actually be inherit, to inherit those promises of the kingdom of God. And so we find ourselves just kind of hoping and a wishing and wishing and a hoping and never seeing the fruit of it. But the Lord's saying this, no, I'm going to do this. So when you hear a word, I don't care if it's someone speaking to you, pastoral message, whatever it may be, the Lord's going to do great things. It's good for you to shut your mouth. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. Zechariah, he shut his mouth. Could you imagine him going home and having to explain this? I saw an angel, and, you know, right? If wife was in your dreams. But, you know, this is kind of the situation that they're dealing with, and he, he, he can't talk. So, you know, the other guys are outside waiting for him. They go, man, the game's going to start. Come on, get out. Let's get out of here. And he comes out, and he can't talk. So he's got to tell them. And it says he made signs, so, you know, you know, you know, you know, had to go through the whole thing and explain it to them. And then, what's worse, he had to go home to Elizabeth and explain this. You know, he's been gone for 10 days. He starts chasing it around the house. You know, you know, you know get away from me, you dirty old man. You know, this kind of thing. You know, no, really, you're going to get right there. I'm coming for you. You know, this, you know, this, you know. And the thing about this is that I want you to understand that Zachariah and Elizabeth had to get pregnant the old-fashioned way. They had to implement themselves to the promise. Wow. And guys, in our generation, and what we're dealing with today in the church, we need to understand something. This isn't going to happen by Tinkerbell flying in the room, you know, sprinkling dust on us, and we can, we can fly, we can fly. You know, it, it, that's not going to happen that way. It's going to be us implementing what we know the Lord has spoken to our lives, and then implementing it to point to bring life. And from that point of life, something will happen. And we all know that John the Baptist was an amazing you know, Bible history character. Someone that we look at and realize that he was, you know, he was the only other man on the face of the earth filled with the Holy Spirit. And there he is doing the work, preparing the way for the Lord. And he had to do his job. All right, so this is the story. Elizabeth gets pregnant. You know, and how many of you think that maybe she, I mean, we don't know this to be true, but just looking at life, you know, she was an older woman. She probably had pregnancies, you know, false pregnancy, maybe lost child, whatever. So there's a lot of history in her. So she's hiding herself because, you know, first of all, you, you're pregnant? Are you kidding me? Did you guys have much of a drink? Whatever. You know, it's like they're doing this whole thing, and it's kind of that, that whole situation. But she's also concerned because, again, this is life. So she hides herself five months. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Gabriel comes back, and he comes this time to a child. She's like, most theologians believe she was between the age of 14 and 16 years old. And the angel of the Lord comes and says, Mary, congratulations, you are great among women. I got news for you. God's going to do this, 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 and this, and you're going to get pregnant, and you're going to have a child. He's going to be called the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. The government's going to rest upon his shoulders. I mean, how many of you would be shocked if the Lord said that about your kids? I mean, you know, will they make their bed is more the question that we're asking, right? 
and that's that's the challenge. But she hears all this and she goes, uh, how's that going to happen? She doesn't understand the miracles of making beds. But she just understands, like, what in the heck are you talking about? I've never known a man. She questions, even as Zachariah questioned, true? But when she questions, what does the angel do? He says, I said, I'm tired of you humans, and slap her around. No, he just says, no, the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you. And something miraculous is going to happen. You're going to conceive. And then, you know, so that's, again, this is kind of a ethereal word, don't you think? How would you like to hear that? You go home, talk to mom. Mom, it was, it was God. You know, this is, the, you know, this is the whole situation, right? Then the angel says this, right now, your cousin, she's already five months or six months with child. And what does, what does Mary say? That old girl? Are you kidding me? And when she hears that Elizabeth is pregnant, she takes it as confirmation and she says, let it be done to me as you have said. Basically, the young generation is looking to the old generation saying, what? That old girl's pregnant? That old church is actually doing something? These people are actually producing fruit? Are you kidding me? Woo-hoo! I'm in! Right? Yes. So then she left and she went to Elizabeth and she walks up to the house. You know, she knocks on the door. You know, Zach answers the door. You know, Elizabeth home. You know, he can't talk. Mm, this kind of thing. He's really had a rough life. You know, can you imagine, guys? Come on. Nine months, maybe ten months of not talking and not being able to say, you know, she's out shopping. She's out buying. We're going to do new cabinets. We're going to do new carpet. You know, this is, because you can't say a thing. And, you know, <clears throat> this is all going down. Elizabeth comes out and she says this, Whoa, who am I to be blessed that the mother, now where did she get this word? That the mother of my Lord and Savior would come to my house today. Because when your voice came to my ears, the child within me leaped with joy. What an amazing prophetic word. What an amazing prophetic word. And Mary goes, Woohoo! This is it. And then she writes a great song. You can sing it later. But it just, you know, she, she, she's confirmed because this old girl is full of life. Now, it says then that Mary stayed with Elizabeth for the next few months before she delivered. Now, what did they talk about? Well, Elizabeth could say, well, this is how you nurse. This is how you change diapers. This is how you do. This is what you do when they cry. She had no experience. The only thing she could share with them was the depth of the word because she knew and practiced the things of the Lord without blame. That was the investment into Mary. And then she left. Now listen, Mary, I mean, Elizabeth could have been pretty ticked off. Can you imagine all her life? She's waiting to get pregnant. And all of a sudden this little girl comes and says, oh, by the way, I'm pregnant and I didn't even have to do it with a guy. You know, God did it. It's like, really? You know, come on. But can you imagine how it would actually take away her thunder or take away her joy? Just like, but she doesn't receive that. She jumps for joy and says, who am I to be blessed that I get to share this blessing with the mother of my, my Lord and Savior? There was a blending of the generations. They sat there together and they got to, in, to impart to each other, first of all, this amazing prophetic promise. And second of all, this wealth of knowledge that's sitting there. And they both got to share. And both babies had to be born for destiny to does that make sense? It really does. And I want you to understand that, that in our churches today, what has happened, there's a separation of the generation where we have the SOBs. You guys, you guys have SOBs here, don't you? Slightly older bunch? Okay, you know. Uh, you, you were just thinking bad stuff. But, you, know, but, you, know, you have the slightly older bunch over here and you have all the kids. And the kids, you know, I, we used to tell this to guys, pastors, when they have youth pastors growing up, you say, listen, don't cut these guys off. Don't make them sit there and pray for your death so they can take over the church. Don't do that. But blend the generations that you can reap the enthusiasm, the excitement of a generation that says, what? We get to do this? I mean, Mary doesn't even blink. She's, you know, how can this happen? But then God comes and takes care of it. Now she's dancing. She's having a great time. And this is a generation that is going, didn't even have to do it the old fashioned way. She got pregnant and brought life into the, into the body a completely new way. Right? And I want you to understand that the anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit that is moving across the church and the world today is new and exciting. Not it's new to God, 
but it is new to us. Yeah. And in that, we still try to construct it the old-fashioned way. We want everyone to get pregnant the old-fashioned way. God's saying, I got a better idea. Watch. I'm going to move upon the face of the earth and bring life to my children, and I'm going to bring new life to the church, and I'm going to release people to a high, higher yeah. relationship and fullness that they've never seen before, and they don't have to do that old stuff. When we sit there and tell, well, this is how we always did it, all we're trying to do is recreate something that we consider a value. We don't want to throw out our values, but we need to understand that there is something of life that God wants to bear without us meddling. He wants us to keep our mouth shut when it comes to that. We want to impart to them life that we've received from growing up in the kingdom of God. Does that make sense? And here's how that story goes on. Because then Elizabeth, you know, the baby's born. She goes to the temple to do what she's supposed to do. She walks up to the priest. This is an important word. She says, that they say, there, okay, you know, Zach still hasn't talked, okay? He says, what's the baby's name? And she says, the baby's name is, he's to be called John. And they all look at her going, what the heck are you talking about? There is nobody in your family history. There is nobody in your legend. There is no precedent for this child to be named John. And she said, the baby's name is John, right? In other words, it's like this. God didn't ask for this baby to be called Zachariah Jr. She didn't look for someone to inherit the family business. This is a new legend. This is a new bloodline. This is something of life. And now they turn to Zach and they said, Zach, talk some sense into this woman. What's the baby's name? And he takes out his paper and he writes down, the baby shall be called John. His mouth opens. He turns to her and says, we're taking back the carpet. We're going to do that. We're not doing it. You know, he fixes everything. And then he begins to prophesy over his child. And the prophecy that he gives, saying that everything that has been invested into our lives is going to come forward. And this child will prepare the world for the greatest salvation it's ever seen. That's what the older generation carries. That preparation, that place of life, that we can prepare the way for the next generation to walk in. Because if John wouldn't prepare the way, Jesus' ministry would have been short-circuited. Think about it. You know, Jesus, uh, John's out work one day, he's baptizing, he's doing his thing. He looks up and he sees this image coming towards him. You saw the movie, you know how it looked like. <laughs> he sits there and he sees it, he goes, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And as he gets closer, what does he discover? The Lamb of God is his cousin. Now, how many of you would be shocked to find out your cousin was the Lamb of God? I mean, come on. Are you kidding me? We used to play in the backyard. You'd call out. You weren't kidding. You know, it, you know, it's just like, this is it. There he is. And so John bows down. He says, man, I have need that you baptize me. And what does Jesus say? No, you need to baptize me so that all that has been written will be fulfilled. Both babies had to be born so that the greatest salvation the world would ever see would be manifest. Guys, it is both generations merging together to bring forward that place of life. And we need to quit trying to mold people after a former image, but to grab hold of the new and let the life. Because, you know, things have changed. Have you noticed from when you were a teenager? I mean, things have changed. I mean, we actually have electricity now. But, I mean, it's like, you know, there are so many things that have, have, have morphed over the last season of time. How many of you watched an old movie and, you know, and, and even it's not even that old, say 80s, you're watching and the guy has to pull over to find a phone booth. You're going, what's wrong with you? You know, just lose your cell phone, you idiot. You know, it's like, but, you know, that's how much has changed. We don't even, I mean, do they even exist anymore? You know, this is it. And things have changed. What makes us think that our God would be in that form that we could take an old-fashioned practice and implement it into this generation? No, we need to understand that those prophetic things that God has spoken to us, that he's established in our lives, are to lay a foundation for another generation to have a baby that will bring forth life the greatest salvation the world has ever seen. It's really easy to figure that out. There are more people on the face of the earth now than there has ever been. So obviously going to be the greatest salvation because there's more people available in the kingdom of God and that's what we want to see we don't want to retire we want to implement ourselves and we need to get pregnant but we need to implement ourselves we need to apply ourselves some of you are getting really nervous but I got news for you the Holy Spirit would come upon you and bring life into your womb 
He'd bring life into your heart. He'd renew to you a sense of his presence and let you know you're not here for yourself. You're here to spend yourself on another generation that they would come into the fullness of God. That the word of God would become the premise by which we establish ourselves. And we see that word manifested in all that we do. That we won't be around looking at empty chairs, but there'll be people waiting in line to walk into the purposes of God. Guys, it isn't going to happen just by osmosis. It has to be implemented. You need to see that there's a prophetic anointing that rests upon you. I shared this with you before, but I, even in recent times, we always get excited when Carl Don calls and says, hey, we'd like you to come speak. We go, oh, great, yeah, hey, we don't have to go far. No, we love it. We think it's great, and we love to be among you guys because we feel there's a prophetic promise. And you need to understand something. You are not, now this is not to pump you up. We don't say this in Chicago next week. You know, hey, welcome. You know, it's like that. It's this. There is an anointing that's upon you. And you need to understand there's an inherited root in your, in your being. And in that, you need to understand that God hasn't brought you here just to keep these chairs warm. But he's called you to be a prophetic congregation, a signs and wonder congregation, that you would bring forward fruit with repentance, okay? But in that same thing, it's like this. Even your pastors, you need to understand that in this situation, guys, it isn't like eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a worker, let the rest go. He, they were appointed of the Holy Spirit to come here and to bring you a new concept of ministry. Do you understand that? Don't you dare make them conform to some old religion. If you do that, you will regret it. And you will be an empty building. That was for free. But I want you to understand that they already gave us the check, so we're out of here. No, it's like this. Listen. You need to understand something. That you're not here to be the same old, same old church. And you need to understand that if you are praying, crying out for revival, if you're crying out for new things, if you're crying out for awakening, then allow your leaders to lead the way and shut up. Shut your mouth. Because you see, if you have your own way, what will you, well, I just think they should be, well, that's not how we did it in the old days. Yeah, well, guess what? That's a barren body. The problem is you practice the things of the Lord without fault. You're here. You give. You serve. You worship. You're familiar with the prophetic. There's only one problem. We're barren. We need to start having babies in the house. Amen. Everyone. From one generation to the other. And we as the older generation, we need to embrace that younger generation and tell them the good news that, listen, <clears throat> I can't explain to you how you got pregnant. We've never heard of that, you know. But I got news for you. We're happy that you did. And we're excited. Years ago, we, when we lived in Hawaii, we, were, we brought Delirious. You guys know who Delirious is, right? Remember them? Anyway, I was talking to Martin, and uh, we were sitting in the airport, and he goes, yeah, we were with Greg Laurie the other night at the stadium. 55,000 people were there. Now, Martin was like in his 20s then. I looked at it, wow, 55,000, that's so cool. But see, when was the last time I spoke to 55,000 people? You little bro. You know, I, I just thought, how dare you, you young whippersnapper. How could you possibly, I've been doing this all my life. How could you possibly reach 55,000 people? I'm, you know, I could slap him down or go, man, how blessed am I to be in the midst when there's someone who's going to come and bring the message that's going to reach another generation that I'm not going to reach. You know, we used to make fun of the crouches. You know, uh, it's like, whoa, whoa. But listen, whoa, they're reaching people that will never listen to me. You know, I just had a chance to meet Matt uh, just a few months ago. And, and, and when, I, when I saw him, you know, I was like, oh, no, we have to go there. And we went. And when I met this man, I thought, forgive me, man. I have judged you in the wrong way. I put, you know, conversation on you that I should never put upon you. You are a man of God who's anointed, who's carrying the vision, and, and he is pregnant for reaching the loss. He is spending millions and millions of dollars a month to reach its people that we can't reach. Come on, shut your mouth. Chief among sinners. You understand what I'm saying in that? Guys, we need to understand that we need to be about populating the house of God by bringing life and not criticizing others for not having life or what we don't think is life. 
That's not where we belong. That's where the angel shuts the mouth. And guys, in that, I just sense the Lord wants you to, to really begin to evaluate this. You are not called to be a mediocre church. You are not called to be the status quo church. You are not here waiting for the second return of the Lord. Wow. Okay? I mean, really, come on. Yeah. He's coming when? How many people, like I said, you don't really want to, I think the Lord's coming soon. We'll be praying. Okay? I mean, it's like, this, you don't want that vision. What you want is that, what can I do today to populate the kingdom of God? What can I do today to help the next generation move into that point that they don't make the same mistakes we made? Anybody here got any mistakes you don't want to repeat? <laughs> <laughs> right? Come on. We need to see that deliverance come in our lives. And so look, at, we have to look at life differently. What time do we go to? What's that? 15 minutes so we can go till noon. It'll be all right. Oh, 50. Fifth, oh, 50. I think okay. Do you, under, do you understand that there's, there's a place of anointing that God wants to stir up inside of you? Elizabeth had that desire in her heart to be pregnant, right? But it took a miracle. But it also took application. They got pregnant the good old fashioned way. Right now, guys, I believe this generation, with your history, with your platform, who you are and what you are as a church, the Lord is saying, hey, you want to have a baby? Now listen, every child has its problems. Can you imagine poor old Elizabeth? I got to go out and get some locusts, you know, I'll be right back. Yeah, I mean, it's like, how do you take care of this kid? You know, I, this is a bad thing. You know, right? She's an old girl up in the hills. Come here. You know, this, you know, this is kind of a tough thing, right? But John the Baptist had to be born. Do you see that you need to have a baby? Do you see that there's something that needs to come forward from your womb that will allow there to be another generation that will take the kingdom of God? It's an honor. It's a privilege for us to be able to walk in that. And I just, I just think it's a couple of things. And I don't mean to be tough. But I do. But it's like, it's this. I, I don't want you to think that I'm standing preaching at you. I just want to tell you this. You know, I'm stirred in my heart for you prophetically. God's not done with you. God's not done with you. Stop talking about retirement. Stop talking about maintaining, well, we just have a little mess day. You know, well, we're just saving up for a rainy day, whatever it may be. Stop it. Spend yourself on the kingdom of God and do it now. Remember what the Lord spoke to you on a better day. Remember those prophetic words that are dormant in your life. Remember those things that he promised. Think about the prophetic words that he gave you over this building, and over this congregation. Don't you dare let them die. Stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. In Ezra, they laid the foundations for the new temple. And, and, and then people, when, as soon as they put down the stone, they all begin to worship. And then even it says, and those who had seen the glory of the former temple saw it. They began to weep. And he came and says, dude, doesn't this seem like nothing to you? They understood that now, now, there was a new place, an old situation, but a new place that was going to be raised for the glory of God. A place where the presence of God was going to dwell on earth. I'm in. I want to build that church, don't you? I don't want a building. I don't want to spend my time. There's better things to do on a Sunday morning, right? Come on, guys. Let's see the church become all that she's supposed to become. Show your power. Show your glory. Come your kingdom. Be done on earth as it is in heaven. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. And not just a, oh, I feel good. But no, come, Holy Spirit. I want to get pregnant and implement myself to seeing that glory come. I'm going to pray for you. Come, Holy Spirit, right now. Lord, I pray that you would chase us around the house. That you'd really rattle our bones and shake us up. And you'd bring us to that place where we would understand that we're not called to retire, but we're called to rise up and spill out that great wealth that you've implanted into our hearts. Call it forward, Lord. Call it forward. Let everyone in this room get pregnant. Come, Holy Spirit.
Come, Holy Spirit. I speak deliverance over you right now. That spirit of rejection, that spirit of fear of failure, the fear of the past, the accusations of man, I break it off of you right now. We will not be prisoners to the past. And we won't be our own prisoners by trying to recreate it. In the name of Jesus, we break that stronghold right now in Jesus' name. We say, come forward, Holy Spirit. We want into a brave new world. Man, we don't even know how to do this. Yeah, we have a concept, but we don't even know how to do this. We want a child that will prepare the way for the greatest salvation the world has ever seen. Rise up, Holy Spirit. Can you sense that move of the Spirit right now? Can you, can you just hear Him speaking to you? Some of you need in your own mind, in your own heart, you need to just say, Lord, forgive me for making you excuses. Lord, forgive me for preparing to retire. When you, I know there's much more for me to do in the kingdom. Forgive me, Lord, for not implementing myself to the best, but just the status quo. Just getting by. I break that right now in the name of Jesus. And I give myself over to you to spend me and spend me big. Can you lift up your hands right now? Just begin to use your language. Just begin. Come on, let's be a vineyard. We don't know how to, we need to pray. We need to pray in the Spirit and let Him intercede for us. Extract from us your goodness, Father. Let there be a joy in the house. Let the cloud come and encompass us. Let the noise rise we can't distinguish between the rejoicing and the weeping. Because of your presence in the room. Come, Holy Spirit. Stir up that gifts, Father. Every one of them. Prophecy, healing, deliverance, Father. To serve the Spirit, wisdom, and knowledge. Let them be manifest in your church. The church will become mature and strong. Bear fruit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Bring life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You guys hear me? There it is. Listen, some of you guys have already retired. And uh, I think this morning's a really good time for you to come out of retirement. Okay. Some of you have really minimized your testimony in your life. And you've kind of already gone on the sidelines and just said, you know, I'll just kind of make it to the end now. Uh, you have so much to offer the younger generation. Um, Jack, you have so much to offer the younger generation. I'm just going to say that right to you. And you're not in retirement, I'm sorry. I, will, I won't let you. And I, don't, I think the Lord has been speaking to a number of people this morning um, that are older, that you've kind of just sat down and said, okay, we'll just kind of see where retirement takes me. Well, you, I, you know, the Lord is saying there is no retirement in the kingdom. There's not even a vacation in the kingdom. Wherever you are, there he is. Because he is in you. And he's taking you to the place that you're at because... He has something for you to see and do in that place. So some of you have gone into retirement. So this morning, um, I'm where the prayer team is going to come up here. And uh, some of you need to say, I'm out of retirement. So you guys have a heritage that you pass on. Now, younger people, here's the deal. You take the heritage that you're given and you take it another level, another step. Okay. And so you build upon the heritage that you've been given. But first we have to give the heritage. And we've been given something. So I love this word this morning. This is directly to us. Um, older people, you guys that have known the Lord for a long time, it's time to stir it up. It's time to stir it up and look for what God is doing today. Okay? Stop living in the past. Stop living in your failure. Stop living in past experience and say, okay, that was me. This is me now. This is what God has done in me. And I want to share that with you to the younger people. And then younger people who take it, 
stir it up and go, and we will come with you wherever you go. Okay? It's a great word for us this morning. Okay, so ministry team, if you'll come up. Ministry, uh, prayer team, ministry team, you're the worship team. And this morning, if the Lord has spoken to you, I want you to come forward. For some of you, the young people, you said, I really don't have much to offer. You do. Offer yourself. For some of you who have gone on the sidelines and you've kind of said, I, had, I did my time, now I'm retired, you're out of retirement this morning. Okay? God is calling you. I love that Jim Kalki over here went into retirement for a while in children's ministry and now he came out of retirement and he's back in and he's doing it. He's amazing. Guys, pass it on. Do not minimize your testimony. There are others of you. I won't call you out by name, but if you don't come forward, I will. Okay? All right, let's get out of retirement this morning. So let's sing a song. God has spoken to you. It's time. have to wait for the song. If God has spoken to you. It's time. I saw a picture when Tom was sharing of um, M&M's. And they're all different colors. They're all the same flavor, which means they're all full of the, of the goodness of God. But we've been sorting. We've been sorting out the colors. And the red ones we know are no good, right? They're full of that red dye, number nine, and so we sort them out. I really like the green and the brown ones. If you have been sorting things in your life and you want God to resort them without your filter, I'd like to pray for you. Now there's some young people here, and it's time for you to step into what God's called you to do as well. So I encourage you to come forward as well. 